Hi everybody. So it's a three day weekend. I am so glad I have needed it. Uh, it's Labor Day weekend, 2023. I had to think about that, 2023. Uh, it is 2023 Labor Day weekend. And, uh, you know, sleeping in for me is 7.30 in the morning. I'm usually up by 6 o'clock, maybe 6.30 if I just want to be lazy. Um, and, and one of the reasons I do it is obviously work. But on Saturdays is generally when I record all my videos. And so I really like to be up early because the, my house is quiet. Nothing's really going on. There's no noises with, you know, people and people doing the yard work and traffic. And so it's really a perfect time to, for me to do my videos. I also get to sit here and enjoy my coffee. Uh, when I was younger, I did not like coffee. But as I've gotten older, I have found coffee to be a very, very good friend in the morning. <laughs> okay, so I am doing a video on my top 10 tips for studying the tarot. This is, I am a beginner. I'm still, I just passed the year of studying. And so this is really for people who are just on their journey. However, I think that you might be able to take several of these or maybe one or two if you happen to be more, you know, advanced in your tarot studies and skills. So these are the things that I kind of reflected on. I did a video on things that I learned in my first year and you know, I, I just thought, you know what, maybe a tips video would be great uh, to kind of really condense it and really focus on each one. So my first tip is decide on a system that you're going to use. Ryder White Smith, Marseille, Thoth, whatever you decide on, I would say stick with it. However, if you're, I would say you was, you should know within I'd say a couple of weeks if it's a good fit for you or not. And if it's not a good fit, just switch over to uh, one of the other two and see if that works for you. I wouldn't spend a lot of time on a system that just doesn't resonate. And, you know, when things work, you just feel it. it you just know. And so the same thing with uh, tarot decks. It's like with people, you know, you meet someone and you just click. And then you meet other people and you're like, hmm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Same thing with the system. Um, now, I think this is really important. And I wish I had done this when I first started is work with a deck that you really love. Like a deck that makes you smile from the inside out, a deck that makes you want to go to your study area and sit down and pick up the cards. That I think is a great way to kind of get you grounded and excited to do your studies. And let's be frank, studying is not in everybody's favorite thing to do, but if it's something that you, if there's something in it that you could enjoy, that would be a really great way to get keep you motivated. And right now, uh, my deck is the Terra Volatile. Uh, and I have several others that I really like. Um, but I picked this one because there's really a lot in there that um, I think I could learn. Oh, look at that was a horrible angle. <laughs> uh, and so I think that's really, really important is to and it, you know, it, for me it was I love the way it feels. I like the imagery. I like the colors. Um, I just there isn't anything about this deck that I really don't like. Um, the you know, the guidebook is free on the internet. It's probably the only thing I don't like. But I bought the guidebook. I think it's overpriced, but I got it. Because I think when it's all said and done, it'd be well worth the money. In fact, I'll show you the book in a later video. And then I'll let you know, yeah, was it worth the money? Um, tip number three is study one deck for six months. Just study that one deck. Uh, it is a great way to get accustomed to that deck, building a relationship with that deck, 
being able to recall the information because like for me, I'm very much a visual learner and I have a very, very like clear mind and like I could see things in my mind very clearly. So as I like study a card and I'm not with the cards, I can actually imagine what that card looks like almost in detail. And so that really helps me. But if I'm using a whole bunch of different cards, it kind of gets muddled. And, and one of the mistakes I did is I, one of my practices was every three days, I would change my tarot deck and my oracle deck because I use them in conjunction with one another. And I found, I found actually, I liked it because it allowed me to use all my cards. However, I wasn't able to really study a deck. I wasn't really able to build that relationship, really get to know a deck like the back of my hand. And that was one of the things when I reflected was a mistake for me. And so I would highly recommend picking one deck and sticking with it. Uh, and so mine's a Terra Volatile. That's the one I'm going to be using. That's the one I have been using. Three to six months, I suggest if you're brand new, do six months, one deck, and you're good to go. Use, okay, one of the, another thing that I think would have helped me a lot at the beginning is if I stuck to one or maybe two books and nothing else. Uh, there are a lot of books out there on the tarot. There are a lot of videos on tarot books that really work uh, for people. Uh, 78 Degrees of Wisdom from Ter uh, Miss Rachel Pollack. Her book is recommended highly by almost everybody. Um, for me, I feel that like I need to use that book further down the line when I have a better grasp. So I need something a little bit more uh, basic, simple, because there's just so much information. Uh, and so if I can just get a very good base, it would help. And the two deck, two books that I'm using uh, is... Uh, tarot, Mastering the Art of Intuitive Reading by Teresa Reed. I really like this book quite a bit. It just really clearly just gives me what I need um, and it makes it easy to digest the information. The other book um, is Holix uh, Holistic Tarot. Yes, it's a big book. Oh my God, Benny, really are you using that? Uh, but Benabel Wynn actually has a section where it's only like the, the tarot cards. And I'm not going through the whole book. I'm, I'm just using the section that has the tarot cards. And really it's like a page, a page and a half of information. But it's so well written and concise that I get exactly what I need. And then the last thing that I do is I'm using the actual guidebook. That's my coffee machine uh, shutting down. <laughs> Sorry. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm using the guidebook for the cards because that's going to be very important because I get the artist's perspective on the Rider White Smith because that's the system I'm using. So that's what I would do. Um, then set a study schedule. Like if you're going to college or um, if you're studying for a test or, or you know, Whatever it is, I think setting up a study schedule will keep you on track on, you know, getting through the cards in a timely manner. Because for me, if I don't set a study schedule, I may not pick up the cards for three or four days or even a week because I have a really busy life, or at least I like to think I have a very busy life. And so setting a study schedule for me is really, really helpful. So... I've decided I get I get up 30 minutes earlier than I normally would during the weekend. I mean, yeah, during the week because it allows me to sit down and take one, maybe two cards and just study them, write my notes uh, and just read everything that I need to with that card. And so setting a set, steady schedule, I think, is really a really good idea uh, for everybody. Tip number six is pulling a card in the morning and pulling a card in the evening. That is the one that I've been doing recently. 
Um, I saw this on YouTube by Light Wands Tarot. Um, she discussed doing this morning and evening poll. In the morning, I just see what the goal is going to be for the day, and the evening is, did I accomplish my goal for the day? I like this on top of doing my little study session in the mornings because it's it's just another way of studying the tarot card. And so I pull my book out, I pull the card, I pull my book out, I read everything that I need to read, I think of my question, I think of the message, and then that's my message for the day. I come back home, I pull my card at the end of the day, and I ask, you know, have I accomplished my goal, or what have I accomplished today? And it's just to be allow me to reflect and pay attention to how the, AM card kind of played out throughout the day. And then I do my readings and I do my notes and I just study two cards. And so that's a great way of starting to use the deck and applying it in real life. You could do three card pulls. I wouldn't suggest doing more than three card pulls uh, at the beginning until you get more comfortable. I did very rarely did I do more than three card pulls in my first year. So number seven is use a tarot textbook. I think this is a great way. Anytime, anytime you take a course, anytime you, know, you want to study something, that generally there's uh, some kind of resource that teaches you how to do that task you're trying to learn. And so the one I'm using right now, and this is one that actually fits me well, is Connecting with the Tarot with, by Don Michelle. It's a, it looks like a small book, but there, it's a lot. There's a lot to, that goes into this deck, but there's several other books. You can buy tons of them on Amazon. Uh, find the one that fits you and then go through the whole book. I mean, like literally from beginning to end, use the book and use only that book to study with. It'll give you a really good guide and a schedule for you to be able to go through all 78 cards. Number eight, journal or I use Instagram. So a lot of people recommend journaling. I think it's a great way of uh, retaining the information a little better and then going back and being able to reflect on your in initial interpretation and as you start to work with a card, how that's evolved or how you've added information to that or added knowledge uh, to that card. I tend to do my pulls in the morning I reflect on the, on the day, then what I do is I take a picture, I post it on Amazon with two or three sentences, and that's how I do my journaling. Um, and that works for me really well, really well. And it also is like this archive that I get to keep, and it has the cards, it has my message, and so I can go back and look at them. It also allows me throughout the day to see what card I pulled and what the message was for the day. Because sometimes I forget, you know, busy life. It, it just feels like, did I even pull my card? And so I just go to Instagram and there it is. And it's an easy way of carrying that card with me than having my journal with me. Um, okay. Take a free online course. There are several out there. Um, the one that I've done is Lisa Pop has this tarot on training wheels, but, uh, Kelly Ann Maddox has one as well, which I think is great. Uh, they're both free. Hers is a uh, trainee tarot course. She has 10 parts and she like she has a ton of knowledge and she's easy to follow. So those are two that you could do. But also a podcast, like when you're driving around or if you just prefer to listen to, you know, a course there's this guy from Washington who I love his podcast. It is called Root Lock Radio, a tarot podcast. The guy's name is Weston. He's from New York City. Um, I like his intro music uh, and he introduces himself and it has like this echoey kind of vibe. But he really has some really interesting takes on the cards, on the majors, on the minors, on each suit. And so I would highly recommend him. And it's free. And 
the last one would be, and I wish I did this a little bit more uh, at the beginning, is have fun. I think that's the most important thing that you can do in learning the Toro is just to have fun. Don't take it so seriously. And let me tell you, I just, I took it way too seriously at the beginning because I was rushing to be a really good tarot reader. And like, you really can't do that when you're first learning. So enjoying the process, I think will go a long way in actually keeping you engaged and without having to, um, without getting frustrated over it. Um, and I think a bonus tip would be is if a word comes up for you that, you know, resonates with a card, don't be afraid to use it and keep it as part of your um, toolbox. So for me, this card, I just see this fool as brave in this particular card. So for this deck, the fool is going to be, that word will, will be part of my toolbox as brave. Well, I hope you found this helpful. And until next time, my name is Benny, and I'm the Fool's Apprentice.